Hey. We are live. Good morning. Good morning. We're back working on our quilt. Hey. <laughs> I just make more work for myself. Because I was almost going to do a nine patch. Or sorry, a four patch. But I changed my mind. Because I want to save that to do. Hi, Lynn. I want to save that to do on a uh, piecing quilt. So, guys, like I said I was going to do, I was going to put a border on this. And I have just determined what I'm going to do. So, this here is my is going to what I'm binding my quilt with. So this is four inch strips. Usually you would use about two and a quarter inch, but I want, um, I might trim this down. This is what you left over from what I originally did. I think I'm gonna trim it down because I really don't want a fat ass border. Now what I went and did is I cut a whole bunch of five inch squares with all my leftover fabric. So I know I have enough here to make my prairie points. Hi, last. Hi, Connie. Hi, Margaret. So I know I have enough here to do prairie points. This here is my border. So I'm going to border all around this quilt, but it's going to be doubled fabric because I'm still going to rag all around the edges of it. I'm not going to rag the other edge because that part will be binded. So these will be my prairie points. So this is how this is going to look with the, the blue with this fabric. So I have to make all these teeny weeny tiny prairie points. And they need to be pointy, not square. And that is basically what it's going to look like underneath my quilt at the very end of the quilt. So that's why I don't want to have a big, huge uh, binding. But I do want to bind these in. So they're not going to be in. They're going to be sticking out about that much, maybe even a little more, because you're only going to do a quarter-inch seam. So that's what I, my goal is, to make the prairie points in these. So firstly, what I want to do is sew my two pieces together. So we're going to sew wrong side. We're going to put wrong sides together because we're going to rag this. And I'm really not going to stick a bunch of pins in here, but I am going to put uh, my clips in. What do I do with those? Right here. And I am going to do a little bit of free motion quilting, so don't laugh at me because I suck at it. But It's I need been a while. Yeah, but I was practicing last night. You want to see what I was practicing? I'll show you. I threw them all in the garbage. So I was practicing on that. <laughs> so it kind of looks like a mess because there's, you know, scribble everywhere. Where's the piece I just did today? I did a white one. And then I didn't like the quilting in the white, so that's why you don't see me using a white border. Yeah, so I want to try and keep this end here as even as possible because this is going to be finished off, okay? This is going to be a quarter-inch seam here. I'm not, I'm not going to muck up these edges, so you want to kind of be very precise if you're going to do your quilt like I am. So unfortunately, I have to pin these or they're going to sew on crooked. And then I'm going to end up having to square this quilt off. And I don't want to do that. So if I can avoid that, like the plague, <laughs> I'll avoid it. So I don't need to go all the way down on this strip because um, the top of it isn't really that wide. So let me just check. Move you over top bottom whatever so the width of it i need to go the width of it so this is the width i am not going to start here i'm going to start oh, just a little bit past this salvage edge because there's a whole bunch of machine holes in it and i don't know if you can see them in the camera there's a ton of holes in there and i don't want those on my quilt 
So I'm probably going to start it about here. Just past those holes. Okay, and then I'm going to sew that all the way down. Let's see if I have a long enough strip here. Mm -hmm. Upside down I do, but okay. All right, so yes, I think I've pinned enough. So I'm going to pin right a little bit more here. So we'll pin that like that. Okay, so now let's take the other end and pin this part to the quilt. Okay, so again, I'm not going to... I'm not going to be doing this. So. Oh, did you know they make generic covers for them? Oh. I don't have to wear my drug plan covers of mine. Yeah, well, instead of me paying $60 usually for my two mesh, mm -hmm. I pay 27 Nice. Okay. So I'm pinning it with the little flaps that we left. Remember we left those? So you want to be a little bit nice and neat and, and kind of stay even so your, your, uh, your border doesn't get all yucky. I'm trying my best to keep this neat. So I was going to do a four patch on it, uh, but then I changed my mind because then I would have had to sit here and cut all those four patches <laughs> and then sew them together. And this is supposed to be a really simple quilt. So I'm trying to make it simple, guys. Hi, Jill. Hey, Crystal. Okay. So what you want to do when you're sewing a border on, this is my preference, but you can do whatever you want. I'm pretty sure KK does it this way too. You want to always sew your width first. So you're going to put this strip on, the bottom strip on, then you'll do your long side. Okay. Is that how you do it, KK? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think most quilters do put their width on first on top and bottom and then they do the sides but it doesn't really matter I, I just like the look of it that way as opposed to having uh the width the length on first and then sewing across the width but it really honestly it's it's your preference it's up to you how you want to do it but this is the way i like to do it and i was taught to do it this way so because i taught myself <laughs> i made my own rules I <laughs> so yeah this is at the time when you're sewing a border on at before anyway before they came out with these this is when i used to get five thousand million pokes with the pins did you ever kk did I ever what? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm trying to figure out how to... Uh... Did you ever get a million pin pokes? Oh, yeah. That's why I got the wonder clips. I got tired of getting poked by pins. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> tired of being poked by pins. All right, so let me bring my machine. machine. Ooh, don't you dare do that. Get snagged. Hey. Jerk. All right, don't you do this back up because that came yeah. unlined it. Right. And you can see my thread blowing because I got a fan blowing here because I absolutely cannot stand the dust from the machine. It, it's driving me to drink. So <laughs> it's really making it hard for me to breathe with that lint going up my nose and down my throat. Okay. So we're going to still sew a 5 eighths of an inch because we are going to snippy, snippity snip this. Uh, Not going to snip it till we get the whole border sewn. So. so I'm going to just drop my needle down. And there we go. All right. Bring this up here. I am going back to back stitch a few. 
and I'm going to move this coffee because I'm going to wear it or my quilt's going to wear it. Something's going to wear it and I need I need the table room. All right. And we are good to go. So underneath, I don't have to worry about this staying nice and flat because there's nothing underneath. I'll walk you through that, KK, because I have um, an iPad. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my MacBook. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm having a hard time figuring this out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, um. All right. So, I'm at the end here, and I will back switch at the very end. All right. Let's see. Now, that did not cut. I don't know why, but anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna snip. I'm going to snip this off. Okay, move my machine out of the way for now. We're good with that. Oh. And now where are my scissors? Oh, right here. So I'm going to use my dollar store scissors to cut this. Because they do a pretty good job at cutting fabric, to be honest with you. All right, that's done. Now we need to snip this part off. Lay it nice and flat. I can take that wonder clip out now. And try to, so that's left over for now. If I run out, I always have that. So here is our cute little border. As you can see, it's sewed up really nice. And we're going to um, we're going to do a little bit of machine quilting on this because we don't want this to pucker up. And I don't know if I'm going to do X's. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing something. But I am going to leave those clips in there for now. So let's go to the other end and do the bottom now. The same way, put our wrong sides, our, our backing to our backs, back, whatever, don't matter. Oh, I need to grab, where did I put those? I need to grab two more of these. Or no, yeah. I need two more. And you're going to open them up. So loosen them up. I'm actually going to go give these a little press. My iron is hot. Oh, it's flashing. I don't want those um, gold lines in my border. All right, good enough. Okay, now let's pin our wrong sides together, okay? I'm just going to go along here and pin. So, how many of you in the audience is going to make a red quilt? I'll be watching for your answers. You know, I'm not a green person. I don't 
But you know, green's definitely not my favorite color, neither is orange. But I'll tell you what, the colors of this, the teal and the green. Did you say porn? What? You said green's it, not my favorite color, and neither is porn? Orange. Oh. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Mary, get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> Girl. Oh, good, last. I'm re Oh, good, Jill's going to make one. Yeah, so if you guys make one, just try it with two colors of, three colors of fabric. So your two top ones and your backing, like this, just to keep it simple. And then once you get the hang of doing this, then you go all hog wild and do the colors. I like to do the colors of what's in my living room. And my daughter, my, my youngest one, Cassie, the, the mom with the new baby, the mom, um, she has a uh, spring quilt. A fall quilt and a Christmas quilt. I still have yet to make her a summer quilt. I think I might give this to her for a summer quilt because I think it's too girlish for, for the boy. So this might be just a cute little quilt for her on the couch. Cover up with the baby or something. So what do you guys think of that? This will be her summer rag quilt. Then she has every season and no reason to ever call and bug me again about making her a summer quilt. Because this is very, very pretty summer colors. And I wish I could still go to Walmart and buy this. And, I, you know, when I first bought it, I thought, hmm, not my favorite. But then when you start to work with it, you know, and I think that's my, you, you got to love or hate fabric. And I, I didn't really like this, but this is all they had. And I wanted to build up my stash. And I didn't have a lot of fabric at the time. So I was just trying to build up my stash in an inexpensive way. So I thought $20 for three yards of really beautiful cotton, I'll just buy it. So I did buy several of them. And uh, I've already used some of the bolts. I made I made uh, zipper bags and stuff like that. So, But yeah, I, I promised Cassie a long time ago to make her... A summer quilt so since this is really girlish I don't think I want to give this to the baby so what do you guys think oh good Connie you're gonna try one I hope you guys show pictures of your quilts to be honest I don't think a baby knows the difference either way no but I do <laughs> well <laughs> I do and I, I, I promised her a summer quilt. But wouldn't this make a nice summer quilt? Yes. It's not really heavy, you know, but, I mean, I know that this, see how these little pieces get in between your stitches? If you see them, just pull those. They're just pieces of the frayed edging. That's all it is. All right, so we can sew this now. Um, I will show you what I did to the length ones that we're going to sew on. I had to join them. And I joined them in the same uh, way that you would join them, join binding. So, and you guys will see how to do that because I have to do that for this binding to join all the pieces because you need one continuous piece. So, where is my five eighths? <laughs> that drop. <laughs> That may be why. <laughs> so I cleaned all my machine when I got home from work. <laughs> Oiled it again, KK. I I'm put not a blonde, I promise. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> okay, let me try this again. <laughs> I need to pay attention. Where's the, to the send button? Oh, crap. It's the right oh, arrow. I was sewing that. I on just got it. Screen. Okay. Dummy. Ooh, I just got it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I snorted over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't had You make me laugh. <laughs> it's okay. You pulled a uh, crystal. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so let's move these wonder clips over the way so I can slide my machine over. All right, now I need my scissors because we need to do some snippity snipping. So make sure you lay that flat. We really don't need that one. Lay that flat. And snip that off. Same with the other end. Okay. Clip out. So I want to make sure that that is good and flat. And let's grab bunzo. Now, for the length of the quilt, uh, these strips, which are the actual width of the fabric, these are not cut on a bias or anything like that. So these have no give. Okay. Well, a little bit, but not not what you would get if you cut it on a bias. So, um, let me get this out of the way so I can show you the length ones now the length ones I had to join two strips together and I will show you guys how to do this super easy and it's very effective and this is what you want to do when you're quilting to reduce bulk is join your two pieces on the bias like so okay do you see it reduces the bulk because when you do a binding and you fold your binding in half, which this is way too big for binding, you don't have a lot of bulk. So you've got a seam over here and you'll have a seam over there. So there's no, no bulk in there. So that's what I did with this as well. So we need two pieces because we need a front and a back. And I've done four of them, so I've already sewed them. Now what I want to do is... Stagger it so that those two seams don't match up. I don't want those two seams to be close to each other at all. And they're still close. All right. So let's go further down this way. So, nope, they're still touching. So you know what I'm going to do? I am just going to move it over like this, even though I'm wasting a lot of edge. So as long as it's long enough to fit across the bottom or length of my quilt, I don't care. So I'm going to go from here to here because I don't want these to match up. You're only going to see one on the front, and that will be whatever side I use. You'll only see one seam, but hopefully I can camouflage it with some quilting. All right, continuing on. I don't need it much longer, but I needed it a little longer, so I had to sew two whole strips together. I probably should have just cut one and a half, and I wouldn't have wasted so much fabric. But this border here, you can make this as thick and or as wide as you want. You can make it three, four, five, six inch border. You can do whatever you want. I'm just making this four inches. So this is a four inch border. And when it's done, it's only going to be uh, three and maybe just a little under three inches. Because don't forget, you got the five eight seam, and then you're going to have a quarter and a quarter seam here. So you'll just be just moving right along. 
So let me snip this right here and cut this off because this piece has the, never use the salvage edge unless you know that's going to get hidden in a, in a seam. But I don't use the salvage edge. Actually, I don't want to go that far because it's crooked. Because <laughs> it's crooked, that's why. But this will be plenty long enough. So I really don't know how long of a piece I need, but that's all right. We'll get her done. Okay, I'm, I think I'm done pinning for now. It might be long enough, so let's grab our quilt. And let's start pinning it to the edge here. Now, we're going to pin it. We're going to spread this open. And we're going to pin it starting up here. So I'm going to go a little bit longer. Oh, I don't want that side. I want to pin it a little bit longer because I can always trim it off. So I'm going to pin those four layers. And then where I open this, I'll put a pin in there. Okay, and then we will rag, we will rag this at a later time. That did not. I don't want to rag it until I quilt it because I think it's just going to get in my way and annoy me. All the phrase, so... I'll quilt it first. And then I'll rag it. So now we're going the length. We're going to do our two lengths. Yes, I have wonder clips from here to Ying Yang on this quilt. But imagine those being all pins. Oh, just the thought of all the pink folks in your boobs, your stomach, your legs, especially, because you drag your, your quilt's dragging up from your body on the ground right up. And you've got a million pink pin folks. I hate that so much. I can't even stress how much I hate being poked with pins. So it looks like it's supposed to be a super thundery, cloudy, rainy day, but sunshiny. I don't believe that weather network anymore. <laughs> My hands are very dry. Had them in so much water lately. And sewing your hem, your seams down like that reduces a lot of bulk. So you might want to reduce a bit of bulk in your quilt. And we are at the very bad finished part. So we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. So again, this is an extra long piece, but it was not long enough to go down the, the length of this quilt. So let's get sewing this. Move the scissors out of the way, move that out of the way, move that, and let's get her done. 
Ooh, I love this. No pin pokes. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> amazing. This is so... I'm disappointed in one of my digis. <laughs> what? I almost got disappointed in my digis. Because I'm downloading the um, downloading the new one I just bought. Right. I, I, was like, I hope this isn't all that I get for the price that I just paid because it's so not worth it. <laughs> what? Oh, it's still downloading. Oh. <laughs> I was about to have like a whole long day. <laughs> I can't wait to make a disaster quote job on this. I can't wait until you get your frame. What? I said I can't wait until you get your frame. Yeah, I know. Me too. Did that move? Crap, hold I hope not. I hope that's underneath. I don't like that. Well, not really. That's the way I, that's the way. <laughs> that's short. Okay, it's fine. Oh, I pulled the needle thread out. Damn it! One of these days, I'm going to watch a video on how to thread this, use the needle threader. And hopefully one day they, somebody makes sense on it because you cannot see it for the life of you. All right. I just want to maybe go back. Couple of stitches. Just retrace my. There we go. Back to business. And we are at the end here. So. And that did not cut again. Great cutter. Okay, so, whoa, I almost cut the wrong thing. I am smart, smart, smart. Okay, this just isn't working with all these nails. Oh, just pulled my needle out again. Holy macaroni. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I was having a blonde moment. A blonde moment? Yeah. Why? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> to make a long story short, mm hmm. She was trying it to was... help me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she was having that kind of blonde moment. <laughs> yeah. Telling her that I couldn't see it, but it was my phone. I could actually see it fine. So. Never mind. All right. So, 
Hi. Look at how pretty. A nice border around that. Well, we do have to do snippety snap to make it look pretty. I do want to get rid of a bit of these threads so they don't annoy me. Okay, one more border to do. And then we're done. So I think I could take all these clips off now. I'm pretty sure we're safe now that it's sewn on. And I'm not going to do the machine quilting. I think I'm going to do it last after everything's sewn because then I'll have a little bit of an edge to pull when I quilt. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to snippety snip these when I'm done the next, um, the last, uh, what do you call it? Uh, then we'll start making prairie points. Okay, so we got one more side to do to get a nice, now this got really big. That extra inches <laughs> made this a lot bigger. Oh yeah, but it's so pretty. Hi, I just love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. So we just need to get one more edge done. And that would be this one. And we've got these two here. I'm going to open this up. There's a seam. Normally, you wouldn't put two pieces together like this, but. Okay. So, moving along. I just want to pin this so I don't muck this edge up. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. Or I wouldn't sit here and waste this time doing it. But I do have to bring my iron and ironing board over here because you have to iron all your prairie points. I don't know how many I'm going to need. But as I make them, I will lay them down on here in the order that I want. So I want to start with the center of my quilt. Well, the center of one edge. And then I got to make the binding yet. So that won't take long. We just have to sew them together. And I don't really know how many, how much I need. So I will do a quick measure of the quilt and the length and the width. And that will give me some ideas to how many strips I need to sew together. Don't forget, you got to miter the corners, so you got to count for that. At least I would count two inches for that. Okay. Yeah, that's a wee bit too crooked for me. I want that to be a little more precise. Oh, God, people, I need to show you what these ladies gave me last night. I opened that last gift in front of all the ladies that have been, you know who they are, all the ladies that are always on my panel. And that would be KK and Mary, Crystal, April, Penny, and who am I missing? Martha. Huh? Nicole. Nicole. Yes. They made me laugh so hard I had tears. <laughs> it was, it's priceless. Okay. So I am going to quit right there because I'm going to snip this piece off. And throw it there and get working to putting this on now. All right. So 
let's start with this edge. Again, I'm just going to go a little bit past my um, seam or my edge just in case I need that little extra bit. So last night we went for a ride to the pet store because we needed to get Tia's nails clipped. And uh, we took Miku with us. <laughs> what a little shit he was in that store. He was such a smart aleck. And it was really funny because when I take him into the pet store, people go nuts because they they don't get to see Scarlet Macaws here in Thunder Bay anyway. Nobody has Scarlet Macaws. And anyway, I put him on the cart, and he walks around the cart like he owns it, rubbing his beak on it, going, hey, buddy. That's what he's saying to everybody that walks into the store. Some some people were just snapping pictures of him. He's going, hello. And then he would <laughs> turn his head sideways and go, hey, buddy. <laughs> people are just like, oh, my God, he talks. <laughs> I'm oh. afraid he's going to start yelling F off to everybody. Oh, I am afraid. And then it was people, you could hear people talking in the store. And little, little Miku, there he is going, do, 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 like this. I'm like, what the hell are you saying? <laughs> I'm like, what oh language God. are you trying to speak now, Bird? <laughs> he, was just, he was just a character. And when I went to push the cart, because we had to buy him some toys, of course. And we had to get Tiki some more pellets because we were almost out of Tiki's pellets. So we grabbed them while we were there. And Miku needed some toys. So I put Tiki's food in the cart along with all Miku's toys and his um, his treats and Tiki's treats. Treat Tiki loves milk. Millet? That's millet spray? He loves that. Well, what does T Miku do? I put them, I put them in the cart, and I'm walking, trying to walk away, and there's Miku. He grabbed the bag and bit a big <laughs> hole in the bag. So I said to Jeff, I said, "Go put this back because now I can't <laughs> seal this bag." <laughs> oh my God. So Jeff had to go put the bag back because it had a big hole in it, and. <laughs> That was not nice, but uh, those oh are zipper God. sealed. They're zipper sealed bags, and I don't want Tiki's pellets to go. You know, they have to stay fresh. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. So, and then he started chewing his toys. He was pulling them, throwing them off the cart. Then I, I push him with the handle. He's walking along the cage part, you know, where the babies sit in front. Mm -hmm. There he is trying to bite me because I'm touching the cart. <laughs> <laughs> he was such a character, but it's so cute when you take him to. I next time I go, I'm gonna video him. He is just <laughs> he's a riot to take to the pet store. He really is. He has more fun than a, an infant. <laughs> he pretty much is an infant. What? They pretty much are infants. Yes. He's a little toddler, man. So I got him in his cage in his room with all his new toys hanging in his cage. And we also, we bought Tiki, a brand new, uh, it's like a play gym. And it's got all these perches on it, all these toys, these dishes. It's got a place for his millet. It's super cute. And it was on sale, 30% um, off. And I thought, I said to Jeff, let's get a Tiki, a new one, because Miku chewed his other one. And Tiki just, Miku takes over everything. He's the boss. He's the boss of everything. I kid you not. Thinks he owns it all. So, yeah, that was, it was quite entertaining going to the pet store with this, this bird. And, of course, the lady at work, her son, seeing Miku, and he's like, look, Mom, look at the parrot. And she's like, oh, that's Ruby with her parrot. But she didn't, she said she was too far away, and we were walking out to the car, and she goes, there's you with your parrot and Jeff with the dog in his arms. I said, yeah, we were taking her to get her nails clipped. Because, in his arms. <laughs> yeah, carrying her like a baby. Uh -huh. 
So it was, uh, it was a it was a good day with the pets. And poor Tiki, I can't take him anywhere because he doesn't like me. And if I take him outside, he's gonna fly away because I can't catch him. Yep, he just honor. Okay. So I know that thread is there. I, I'm not going to worry about it. I know it's there. So, yeah, that was, uh, I enjoyed that day. I laughed so hard at Miku, though. Hey, buddy. And he says it just like that. <laughs> hey, sister. Uh, so loud as it could be. Oh, shoot. What am I doing? Darn it. I'm doing a quarter inch seam. Oh. No, no, no. We need five eighths. And we're sniped. Yep. Thread sniped. Sister, when do you want to come over and make you some quilts and finish this one? You got to bring your sewing machine back. All right. We are getting down to the nitty gritty. Okay. And then I'm going to clip everything. Oh, what happened? Oh, Lord, love a duck. Why does this do this? It's snagged here. Oh, my God, it snagged up there. What the heck? How did it do that? There's creepers. Oh, I gotta rethread the whole thing. It's because I got a fan blowing and I'm noticing there's no dust settling around my, my face. So unfortunately I have to have that fan going, but I can't stand it blowing in my face like this. Debbie so, wants to know, does Mika like car rides? Oh yeah. Yeah, he loved it. He loves car rides. And then Patsy goes, she just brought her sewing machine home and she didn't think you were ever going to make quilts. Oh, well, you're wrong. I didn't have all this quilt fabric for no reason. You know? So you might have to bring your sewing machine back. Oh, shoot. Come on. Well, at least I know how to thread this sucker. I don't want me to thread it 1,050 times. Yep, sister, you need to come back and quilt with me. That's what I got. You're going to shit your pants. Yep, literally. There's an awful lot of pants shitting going on around there. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Gotta turn that fan away, but I don't want the dust in my on me anymore. I see no dust right now. It's here for my quilting machine. As he said, turn fan. It's gonna happen again. <laughs> All right, so I'm just retouching that, and that thread is going to get snagged. It's gonna be so get that way. Wow. Christy Love said McCall's are highly sought at after here in the U.S. and are being stolen from pet stores. Share my depends. I am not wearing those. I'm not even taking a picture of myself in those. <laughs> that is just not, not even going to happen. Don't even think about it. Don't ask. Don't even talk about it. That is funny as that. I put mine on my head. 
That's where mine would go. My, <laughs> you know what my daughter said? <laughs> She's like, um, why do you have those? <laughs> As if I really needed them kind of thing. And I said, because they were sent to me as a joke. <laughs> Why do you have those? Do you pee yourself, Mom? <laughs> I can imagine what was going through her head when she saw those. <laughs> and I would have said it's better than being a bedwetter. <laughs> what? I would have said it's better than being a bedwetter. Patsy, why don't you come over this weekend and bring your machine? Because the table's cleared off. You can sew away. I'll be working on Maya's quilt this weekend to get it finished so I can show everyone it. And you can shoot your pants I'm together. Gonna, I'm not going to teach nobody how to do that quilt uh, because it's it's half done. Yes, my sister, I told you guys yesterday, my sister really and truly loved getting together and quilting. It was her passion. And it was ripped right off of her. All righty. Let's move this over. Okay, out of the way, thank you. And let's take this and trim it. And then I'm going to snippety snip all these. So let's get that nice and flat. So that's extra fabric. And we'll go to this end. And we will trim this off. Along with all these threads. All right, we are good. So I'm going to remove these. <laughs> and then I'm going to snip. First, I'm going to go all around and snip all of the seams, and then I'll go around and snip that part. Okay, so we are good. Where are my Timmy holes? Close that up, move those out of the way, and I'm going to just go around and, well, I'll do this too. It's still a seam that needs to be snippity snipped. This one I can kind of do both at the same time. If I chop this one, then I can do them both at the same time. And that is actually a piece of fray. Okay. So that's basically all I need to do to go along here. Snip all of this. So that's done. Now I need to snip here and here. Barbara Higgins says hi, and Debbie Codson says hi. Hi, ladies. I say, I wish I was. You wish you were what? Oscar Mayer Wiener? Hi. Oh, you wish you were hi? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
I just had the best cookies and cream chocolate cake. Oh, really? <laughs> Breakfast of champions. That's what champions are made of. Right. Oh. So my sister hasn't wrote back, has she? Um, nope. Where you at, Patsy? Sis? <coughs> so we are at this corner. That corner. And then we could just... Snippity snippet. Snippity snip. Oh, those are done. Oh, that one's just a bit too big. See how uneven that is? Not going to matter, guys. I promise you. Not going to matter. Here, ice fridge, ice cooler. That would be Raymond. She hears ice, Raymond. I have an ice machine in my fridge, too. You could always hear Jeff filling it. What, sister? Are you coming here this weekend to, no. to quilt? That heart doesn't mean yes or no. Start making your Christmas quilts for your kids. New ones. <laughs> All right, that uh, side's done. Cut there. And trim. Whoops, I think I almost. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to waste it. You're supposed to drink it. <laughs> okay. The moment's passed. <laughs> I just found a few more. That one deep throated it. Look at that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mary, oh god. <sighs> he took it like a champ, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's a hamster drinking water. <laughs> He's deep throating water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think the chocolate's getting to me. <laughs> okay. Is last right, last yes. six by yes. four. Okay, mm -hmm. I keep forgetting, Toby. You should just come and crush me with an island. My sister is like totally, totally ignoring me. That's okay, I'll quilt by myself. It's 
okay. I'll entice her. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will do it myself. He said yes. All right. So now I just have to go along here now and snip. Snippity snip. All of this. All around the outside, up to that seam, on the other side of the seam, and on that side. And that really helps your quilt to lay flat as well. And when I'm done this, I'm going to take it outside and give it a shake. <laughs> just because I want to get rid of some of the lint that I will create. <laughs> all these I lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Christy goes, I and it. I thought those two were sweet and innocent. I said, LOL, <laughs> who me? I am really. I have my not so sweet moments. I relapse sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. <laughs> You know when you get the giggles and you can't stop? <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> so I'm actually... I'm actually not going to cut this yet. I'm just going to leave that strip. Just cut this part and this part and this part and this part. I think this is one of the long sides. Yep. Oh, it's getting dark up now. Oh, yeah, the clouds are rolling in, guys. We're going to have some thunderstorms. That's Satan. Yes. Messing with the devil. And when I quilt, my whole floor gets covered in threads. I don't know about you, KK, but I can't even get it unavoidable. Yep, it's unavoidable. Yep. Even as careful as you might think you are, you still have threads on the floor, especially if you have carpet under you. I have a rubber mat under me, so... <laughs> that's what they make vacuums for yes ma'am that's what I use my vacuum for and it vacuums up so nice your carpet looks so beautiful after you suck up all those threads So, like I had told you before, doing all of this at once is very hard on your wrist because my wrist is hurting already. And it doesn't take much. Oh, I wasn't going to trim all the way. Hope I didn't do that on the other end. 
I need room to sew. Did I do that over here? I hope I didn't. No. Right? I do it over here. No. Okay. Phew. Almost had heart failure. So that is done. So continuing down here. Oops. Thread machine or machine thread. So this is another width, and then I have a length to go, and then I'm going to take this outside and shake it and hope it's not raining yet. I can't wait to show you guys this when it's all done and washed. Washing it is just going to be beautiful. I'm warning you, though, take it to a laundromat, make a mess of their machine, and just leave it, walk out. Unless you want to sit, bend down and clean your machine out. And I can't clean mine out because I can't even reach the bottom of my machine. It's so deep. Yeah. Um, Patsy says, Sister, where are your other snip scissors from Fabric Land? They're here. I just like these ones better. They cut better because look at. They fit your whole hand in them. And the other one makes my wrist because you're squeezing that thing constantly. They're right here somewhere. And then Nikan, those are the uh, five-inch Tim Holtz. He has got five, seven, and then the snippets. <clears throat> yeah, I might buy a pair of the snippets because oh, I'm looking for them. that might work nice for snipping these. I like Don't my hurt. little pelican scissors. Your what? The pelican scissors? The bird yeah. scissors? Yeah. I love those ones. I have pairs of those, too. I bought the little ones. And I bought the big scissors of Tim Holtz. So I have all three sizes. And I can't live without them now. Oh, you do? I only have yes. this size. Yeah, I have that one. I have the tiny one, which is great for cutting out the little itsy-bitsy things. And then um, really? the big one, which cuts, like, amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you see how my sister evaded my question? Patsy. She's rude. Yeah, all these threads are going to make a heck of a mess all over me. I think the prairie points are going to be super cute. They really do. I'm going to I think I'm going to eventually buy a whole set of Tim Holtz scissors just for quilting. I love right? how, how they cut fabric. <gasps> Cheryl says hi. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> Itchy. Face. I feel threads on it. Oh. All right. So this will be the last of my snippeting, cutting fringe. Other than the ones I have to finish off after. I'm done the binding. I'm so excited. This is going to be the most cutest gray quilt I ever made because I've never finished off the edges the way I'm about to do this one ever. Oh, 
fell on the floor. Oh, piece of binding. Okay. I gotta go back to work now. Oh, poor Mary. No! I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so... Look at how cute this looks with the border. I love it. I really, really love that finished look of the border. Look at how cute. Okay, so I'm going to pause for the cause and stretch a little bit. <clears throat> Come pause back. <laughs> yep. We're going to make prairie points. Actually, I probably should make my binding first. You know that? Uh-huh. Yes, because I, mean, I want to pin my prairie points to my binding and pin them to the quilt as I make them. Okay, so when we come back, I'm going to make my binding real fast. And I'm just going to go give this a little shakety shake. I'll be back. Talk to them, KK. Okay. Hi, this smells very nice. Smells okay, look. So I need to add the pause for calls to the things that Ruby says, because that's funny. Pause for calls. Hi, Amy. What's everyone doing? I'm sipping on coffee. Hello. <clears throat> so, oh, there you are, Penny. Ruby went for a calls for the calls. <laughs> I went to get a tissue for my issue. Calls <laughs> <laughs> for calls and tissue for my issue. Does anybody else need a tissue? Okay, Amy's at work. Just sitting here. Yeah, I know. I'm awkwardly trying to figure out what to talk about. <laughs> I went to bed early last night. Like 9 o'clock. That's really early for me. And everybody else is probably thinking. She's lying. Like, That's your normal boring. bedtime. Huh? That's your normal bedtime. No, it's not. I'm usually up until, well, some people like like to keep others up until like three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to name any names. <clears throat> um, but I usually stay up until probably 10 and 12. I think I went to bed around 1231. Who did? Me. Of course, oh, that's early for you. People were still up. Not gonna name any names. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> hoot, hoot, night owls. Debbie just said that she uh, she got home from discussing her issues. No. Uh -uh. Yep, I was sleeping. I was out. I was watching. Okay, because. I love Kay Wood quilting and Ruby sent a link to me like a couple weeks ago. She was like, Hey, you got to check this video out. So I checked it out and I've been watching her nonstop and I fell asleep to her last night. Not even joking. She's just one of them ladies who's got that soft spoken voice and it just puts you to sleep. Yep. Nikan, those are my curtains. So, and then I woke up this morning, cleaned, and then started looking at trying to figure out how to use Etsy to um, look at some digital downloads. And then, what am I doing? And that's all I've done. And then she went crazy buying said digital downloads. I didn't, I did no such thing. You did too. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, I have to show you the one penny, the Halloween. Okay. When you do this, this is the back side. Now I'm gonna, I'm just going to press this, just because I want this to lay flat. So when I quilt it, it's gonna, it's gonna lay flat right here. But I cannot touch this velour with my iron because you have to iron that on the wrong side. So maybe I'll just hand press it. 
I'm scared to touch that bluer because it'll leave an iron print on it. And you I can't lay it. like cotton on top of it. Well, I could. I could lay a piece of fabric on it. Yeah. Just to so I noticed there was threads hanging right. Like, see this? I can't pull that. So don't don't yank it. Just trim it off. You'll see lots of little frayed pieces. Just trim them off. Don't. That's what he said. You can't pull it. Then don't pull it. Cut it. But most of them you can pull out. Just, I seen a thread here. See like this? Just see that came right out. That one. But there was one that was a machine thread. And I can't even find it now. I thought it oh that's a piece of thread I need to trim off. Just because I'm being picky. Oops, my glasses are gonna take a hike. Hi Jamal. Hi Kelly. Hi Kelly. Hi Jamal. Okay, I can't find those threads. There was two pieces that were long pieces of thread. Now, how do you miss those? Mind you, it's kind of bright outside and sunny still. It's just really dark in my room because I got the lights out because it leaves too much glare everywhere oh my god if you guys could feel this how can you see how soft that is mm -hmm. it's just wonderful and make sure when you wash your quilt you put some fabric softener in it ah here they are these are machine threads and they're not just frayed pieces that i wanted to trim off and that's that's a machine that's just a frayed piece. But you will catch a few underneath your seam. Not a big deal. Just pull them out. If they don't pull, then cut it because then it got sewed in. So there you go. I went through the whole back of this to make sure there was no threads in, in all these seams here. And when there was, I just pulled them out. Can you guys see the really cool diamonds? Look at the diamonds. How pretty the diamonds. It looks so pretty. It looks like it's quilted already, which it is. Okay, so I'm going to... It does. <coughs> I'm going to go give this a quick little press, and then I'm going to make the binding for it. And this is my binding here, but I am going to take these and trim them to two and a half because this is way too fat for a binding. I don't want it that fat. So... Usually it's two and a quarter. I like two and a half. I like that extra quarter of an inch because, well, it's just because I'm going to have thickness with the, the um, what do you call it, the prairie points. Prairie points. So I'm going to just allow that extra quarter of an inch so when I flip that binding over, I'm probably going to hand stitch that binding all the way around this because if I use a machine to sew down that binding, um, you can pretend this is the binding. So when you go to wrap this around on your quilt, so pretend it's just this is the binding here. If I was to stitch this down, I don't know. It might, it might show through on my prayer points. I'll have to check it once I get to that stage, but I'm not at that stage yet to even determine that. So let me go get these trimmed, and I'll show you how to join your binding. It's super easy. So I'm just going to be right over here by the iron. I'm not going to change camera views, and I am going to move this damn fan. Oof, I'm so tired of it blowing in my face. All right. So let me move that out of the way for now, and I'm going to give this a little press. Nothing serious. I just want it to lay flat. So where's all those extra pieces? Let me get a nice big long one. Here, this will work. I'm just going to lay that over top of my bluer so I don't touch it. <coughs> I don't want to leave iron marks on it. No, that needs to, my iron needs to heat up. It's too cold. 
not really pressing it. So the green light's flashing. I'm gonna run and get some more water for my iron. like there's a little hamster on your camera, KK. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. It's because I'm typing. Oh, sounds like a little hamster eating a cracker or something. <laughs> oh. uh, um, who was it? Nikki was asking if you um, can use a different color. And actually, you can use a different color on the backing of the material yeah. and in the front. The, what quilters do, they tend to find a coordinating or matching thread to where you can't see the back or the front. Some people but just if you want it crazy right. and use a totally contrasting color and do like a design all over the place. And that's what I just said. You can use a color fabric, but I would use a coordinating matching fabric to where it will coexist and blend in really good with the actual colors to where you can still see it. All right. Crazy girl. And you don't have to use like the material, like the white on the back of the back. You can actually um, you use anything. Use color. Anything. A pattern, anything. Yes. Right. You can use absolutely anything. No rule. Nope. Just use something that's going to fray. Make sure it's frays. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're going to sew it to the front, and it's going to fray with your other fabric. Yeah, in this case, because there's no padding. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do with my um, scrap quilts that I've got. I got one star scrap quilt. And then I got one that I call Scrappy Stripe X's and O's. That's going to be one, the other part of the quilt. So I'm going to have two quilts on one quilt. One's going to be a back end and one's going to be front. So that way I can flip it up. So it does, it's always nicer when things are pressed. I can tell you that. Yes. Always. And those who don't know how, those who have a hard time, like, putting your points on or matching up the seams, paper piecing might be for some people. I know some people don't like it, but yeah, paper that's piecing is just not my thing. And then you ain't got to worry about points matching up or anything because you just put the fabric on, you leave a quarter inch, you cut a quarter inch, add another piece of fabric, and that's how you do paper piecing. All right. Now that I have it all nicely pressed, and I love that because now it's going to just make sewing the binding on nicer. So that is all nicely pressed. And we're going to put that over there. And now I'm going to go, oh, shoot, I need to measure this. Hang on. Uh, where's my measure tape? Okay. So, don't you kiss up to me? Nobody wants to hear your whining. I'm going to sit to do this because my back is actually no, hurting me. I'm not letting you out. I'll All right. Right here. No. So, from one end, you're sitting all the way back in your chair, Ruby. Yeah. So, from one end of the quilt all the way to the other end, it is. Sewing is one of those things that's way too easy to scoot to the end. 92.5 centimeters. So 92.5. Why is this centimeters? I don't want centimeters. Duh. <laughs> I don't want centimeters. Where's my where's my inch one? I'll be in my door here. Hang tight. I hope it ain't one I have to roll up. Where is that? Yeah. 
measuring tape rolling in. Oh, somebody steal. Oh, wait. I have lots of these. All right. Okay, so it is by inches. 36 inches wide. So 36 times 2 is uh, 64. Wow. So 64 plus the length times 2. So the length is... Did I say 36? But it's 72 inches. I need that makes 72. 36 and 36 is 72. So I'm sure I said 36. And then this one is 46 times 2. So 72 plus 46 plus 46. That's how long of a piece of binding I need. But I'm going to make 92. It. Plus 72. Is how much? 164. So I need 164 inches. Now let me see what the length of each one of these pieces are. And we have how much, JK? <laughs> Hold on. I think, I think it was 162. 72 plus 92. It would be 96. 164. No, for, she said 42. 40, 40, no, 46 oh, plus 46 46. is 92. Oh, okay. So this cut out three inches. Damn it, that's centimeters. One inches. That's one sixty-four. All right. So this will be. So how many strips do I need at thirty-one inches? Look at this food bowl. How many strips you need at thirty-one inches? Forty-one inches. Each strip is forty-one inches. <coughs> Thirty-one times four. Shit, hold on. I mean, oops, my bad. No, forty-one times four. Yeah, four strips should be four strips at forty-one, right? I don't know. How much does forty-one come to? Forty-one times four is one sixty-four, I believe. Forty-one times four is one sixty-four. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sew five together. One. Two, three. Because yeah, you just want a little bit for the minor corners. Yes. Four. And five. So we'll sew five strips together. I'm going to cut five strips right off the bat. So I am going to cut these, like I said, two and a half inches. All right, one, two, half. Okay, I'm going to cut all five of them at once. Five, ten strips. I'm actually cutting through ten layers. <laughs> Wish me luck. Good luck. You need a good, sharp rotary tool and lots of pressure. And, and I did it. And don't forget, we have to join these, so we're going to lose length. That's why I did five. Uh, Christine says she just tuned in for the first time. Is that Ruby? I said, yes, Christine. <laughs> Hi, Christine. G. Christine who? Christine G. Oh. Yep, it's me, Christine. Okay, so let me get my glasses and let me show you how to do the joining. So you need a ruler and you need a pen, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm using one that's disappearing. And if you don't sew quick, it disappears quick. So what you want to do is you want to take your strip and put your strip right side up like this. Okay, then you're going to take your next strip 
and you're going to put it down on top of this strip right side up. But you're going to put it exactly at a 90 degree angle like this. But I'm doing it this way because there, there's the salvage edge and it's got a million holes in it. So that's another reason why I want it to account for extra in this strip. So you put right sides together and you lay them, you just lay this one right across so you've got a 90 degree angle on this. And then you just pin it. Yeah, because when you do the corners like that, I do exactly how you're doing it and you end yep. up losing almost an inch and a half just from that because you don't go yes. from the, the part that's cut off just a little bit, you go at the angle part furthest. Right. You end up losing like an inch and a half. Right. So what you want to do is start at this very, see this tip right here, you turn it. So you're going to make a diagonal sew on this from this point to this point where your fabric starts here and where your fabric ends there. So you're just going to draw a line. I'd, I've tried to do this without drawing lines and it doesn't work. Okay. So you're going to, oops, I didn't want to remove those goof troop. I want to keep this in position as, where's my pins? I was using pins earlier. I don't even know where I put them. Anyway, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew it right away. And this is called Disappearing Ink and Mark Be Gone. So this one's a washout. This one disappears. If you don't, if you don't hurry up, it's gone. <laughs> so I like that. So what I'm going to do is, join them and sew them then I'll take it over to the iron and I will sew them or sew them I will iron it in half and I'll show you that in a moment okay so take it on the diagonal that you follow your little line start right where your fabrics meet start right in that corner drop your needle down and then sew away and I like to backstitch this. You don't have to, but I like to. And sew right off. Okay. And that is your beautiful corner or piece. So you're going to trim this off at a quarter of an inch. Just leave a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then these are what you would call dog ears. These are what's hanging off your fabric. Trim those there and trim it so it's flush with your fabric. And then when you open this up, you have a beautiful joined uh, by, uh, binding, not bias. And I can see a piece of my dog ear still sticking out, and I don't like that. So I'm just going to trim that other piece of dog ear off make that nice and straight so that's that so that one's joined so there's two pieces joined and we when you go over to your iron you're going to open this up i like to just finger press it for now it makes it easier when i get to the iron and you're going to iron your seam open and that will really create less bulk for you so my mouse keeps getting smacked all right, so let's do our next one here. So where's one end? So here's this one. So I want to sew all five of these. Oops, right sides up. Remember, right side up and right sides together. So uh, I'm just sewing right below those holes because I don't want them. And I'm going to clippy. I really should get pins. I think pins work better. So, oh, they're right here. Okay. All right. So, i rather use a pin. And these pins are ones that you can sew over top of. They are very expensive pins. But I don't sew over top of them because I still broke needles. 
These are those very tiny glass pins. Those are glass on the, the tops of them. All right, so we're gonna draw our line from that corner to that corner. My ruler kind of moved there a bit. All right, I'm gonna get it sewed because that ink is gonna disappear on me. So I'm gonna just quickly run over here and give it a quick sew job. And find my foot pedal, which keeps taking off on me. Okay, so we will trim this down a quarter of an inch. Trim off our dog ears. And trim off these dog ears. Okay. And then if you open it up, look at how beautiful. So again, I'm going to just give this a finger press because when I go over to my machine, I'm going to, or my iron, I'm not going to purposely iron these individually. I will iron them when I fold the binding over. So actually I could bring my iron here because we're going to be doing a lot of ironing now when we start making our prairie points. <clears throat> so the biggest mistake people make when they're sewing their binding like this is flipping this over and putting them the wrong way. Debbie said, don't you hurt them dog ears? <laughs> right? <laughs> Nasty mommy. Okay. So right sides together. That's a normal thing to do in quilting is sewing with your right sides together. So put one in the middle. One over here. And one right there. Okay. Get our ruler. And Mark your lines. And my back, my lower back is hurting for some reason. Ew. And I'm not sitting on my chair properly right now. I just trying to relieve some pressure on my back. Okay. Go over and give it a quick sew. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't don't make these marks. They just sew it. I've tried to do that like that freehand, and for some reason this doesn't work for me I can't sew a straight line nor can I draw a straight line okay we're already getting pins everywhere so where did that one go I think I picked it up the magnet did anyways all right Trim. Trim off your doggy ears. Give them a haircut. Okay. Open it up. Check it to make sure it's nice. And it is. And then open your seam by giving it just a little finger press. Okay. And now I've got one more to do. And then I'll get my ironing board over here. I'm going to have a lot of ironing and a lot of um, pinning to do. A lot of poking, you mean. And that's that. Okay. And there we go. Now let's draw our line. And I don't know, is my purple line gone from the last? Yes, see? The purple line is gone. <laughs> it disappears. You've got to be pretty quick with this. So don't plan on doing a lot of lines with this. This one here, you have to use the blue one. Blue one's the washout one or steamed out with an iron.
And Christine G said that she loves the fact that you do all these crafts and you share it with everyone. Oh, thank you, Christine. I really enjoy sharing my talent with everyone or my knowledge. Not really talent. I would just call it knowledge. And then I told her, I was like, yeah, she sure is a Jackie of all trades. <laughs> she said, I love Jackie. Yeah, Jackie, eh? <laughs> well, like, I call my husband Jack of all trades because he does all kinds of stuff. And I, I consider myself Jackie of all trades because I can do a lot, too. Like, yes. I can crochet, but I just don't like doing it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's why you don't crochet. Yes. I know how to do it. I just don't like it. <laughs> well, I'll bring my ironing board over here because it's so easy. And move my sewing machine because i got a lot of ironing to do. And we will get this binding. This is going to be so pretty, honestly. The thing, though, is the binding, you're not going to see this that much. Well, you'll still see it, but it does match the border because... I wanted to stick with um, I wanted to stick with this because I really want my prairie points to show up on this more than anything. So anyway, that's the binding. Let's get all of this out of the way. We will need our pins, I think. I don't know yet. I'm going to use pins or or these. We'll see what works best for the actual um, prairie points. This sewing machine's very heavy. I'm going to turn it off for now. And I need to pull the plug because it's not reaching. Uh, there we go. Okay, Irene. Comes to mama. Wow, I got, I'm got. i starting to look like Missouri Star Quill Company's floor in here. <laughs> right? Her and Quilt in the Day, <laughs> they just love to just chuck everything on the floor. And Ruby's been doing that now. And I don't like it. Because that's a huge mess. All right. I don't know if I'll have room, but let me grab my ironing board. My iron. And I love my iron board. All right. So it's on its own little mat. I could probably zoom out a wee bit. Hey, hi. I don't know if that'll help. Oh, my God, my back hurts. Whoa. Well, at least you guys can see. That's all that matters. So now this is the fun part. So I'm just going to give this a little press because I don't like it crooked. And we're going to start with folding this in half wrong sides together. Okay. And get it as nice and straight as you can. I have to actually do it the other way because I can't see it. I can't see if I'm straight or crooked. Or nothing. Okay. And don't stretch it. Okay. Slide that out of the way. You have to do this for the whole length of your So I, ouch, I really think, I really think. So this is where my little seam is. Give it a press, fold it over, and there's your bulk gone. Love it. And it irons super flat. I know my iron, you guys are jealous of my iron, but this was the best Christmas present in my life that I ever got was from my kids. 
I never imagined they were buying me this iron. I just mentioned it to my daughter, how much I love this limited edition pink iron. I seen um, Missouri Star Quilt Company lady using it. And I was like, oh my God, I want that pink iron. That's going to be my next big purchase is that iron. I want that iron because you can lay it flat and it pops up. It rises yep. up and then no more having a tilted iron and accidentally burning yourself with it. Yep. And we're going to make a Christmas, quilted Christmas stocking in July. We're going to do that for our Christmas in July. Aside from our paper crafting, we're going to make a Christmas stocking. And it will be all quilted. And then getting close to Christmas, I'm going to make a Christmas oh. tree. Wow. wow. Lag. Oh. Holy bucket. Did I mention I'll be gone for the entire month of July? Yep. Okay. Just like I'll be gone for the entire month of October. Because I'm not doing Halloween. <laughs> I hate Halloween. I'm not a big fan of Halloween, but I love Christmas. So I'll just do Christmas in October, too. What? No way. Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, I need him. Why not? Debbie goes, where are you going, Penny? I said, anywhere there isn't Christmas. Well, you're going to see a lot of Christmas in July on YouTube, so we'll see you in a month. Yeah. Because that's a lot of people do Christmas in July on YouTube. Uh, it's just the You can't leave. No. <laughs> it's just Look, okay, I'm the same way. I don't mind. I'll watch it, but I think too early is just overkill. It's okay. I'm taking part in the July and Christmas. <laughs> oh, God. My back hurts. I need a new coffee. Mine's gross, and I let it cold, get cold. And there's one thing I can't stand is microwaving it. Can't handle it. I love quilting. I really do. It's very relaxing. Uh, it can be trying if you're doing a very difficult pattern. And it can be a little frustrating when you sew something wrong. you got to rip it out. I mean, it happens to all of us. It's inevitable you're going to make mistakes. It's, I do it all the time. I sew up, when, especially when I'm working with, pe when I'm piecing. Yay, 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 yay. I get so frustrated because I sewed a triangle on wrong. On the wrong side <laughs> of the square or whatever it is I'm working on. It's easy to do. So. Ow. Hey, we're down to our nitty gritty. Ouch. All right. So here's our, our, our binding. It's all one continuous piece. You need one continuous piece. When you sew a binding on, you have to leave a good two inches, and then you would start sewing from there. Um, so this is where I need to measure on my quilt. As I go, I will start on a long side when I put my binding on. So I will start 
what I what I will do is make my things first and then we will start measuring so let me make a few of these first so you're gonna fold your square in half press it and then you're gonna meet the same edge here and keep it all straight and don't burn your fingers because it's easy to do okay so there's one prairie point and I want my prairie points to go here and one over here not in the corner okay hope you all know what I mean by that I want to make sure these all line up I need as best as fingers. Ow! Hot. All right. So I kind of want these to overlap. And I don't know how much. Actually, I'm going to put them on the side that they're going to go. So we want it to go on the edge like that. Then we want to overlap it about that much. Try to stay consistent. That's the main thing. Now, I want to go about two prairie points down. So on my third prairie point, this is where my, my, my binding would go. So on my third prairie point is where I'm going to lay my binding. So I'm going to leave my binding open about that much. And if this doesn't make it even, I will, I will freak out. It's hot very quickly. Okay, so this would be where my first L dean it. First prairie point will go on my binding. But actually my prairie point goes down first. Is that even? It's really hard for me to see this. If it is or not. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then I will pin the, the binding down like that. So um let me use i'm gonna try my wonder clips first okay. i'd rather use these than use pins on the ironing board because it's really hard to i'm just hoping this is gonna work that should go right to the corner I'm going to clip it there. And here. Okay. All right. Like that. So I'm going to work my way down this quilt, adding my prayer points in, and pray they all work out evenly. If not, I will just go and make some adjustments. Pull it all out again. Start again. Okay. So I'm going to use my. What should I use to measure? Hmm? I could use something to measure the distance. I should use a piece of fabric. Yes, I'm going to use a piece of fabric to measure. So I'm going to fold a piece and iron it and use this for a ruler. All right, so from here to the tip, it's right there. So I'm going to put a finger mark in there and snip them with my scissors. This will help me to get them spaced evenly. That's how you're going to do it. All right. So before I put you down, 
well, let me just measure them all just so it can be perfect. So from that point to that point is where the next one's going to go. Okay. What the heck are you doing, Ruby? I need to go this way. Screw it. I'm just going to use this. That binding can go on any time. All right. Perfect for now. Hey. Okay. Should have started in the middle. That's where you're supposed to start. Aren't you supposed to start in the middle, KK? What do you know? Eight rows, so one, two, three, four. So this here is the middle of my quilt. So come to memo. And when you put your prairie points down, you always want to put that folded edge on the top because that's what gives it a lot of uh, decoration. So this is going to help me with this. Lordy, lordy, my back hurts. All right. So how did I measure this? From here to there. So that's where my next one's going to go. This is really thick with all these layers, but it's going to be beautiful, I promise you. And I'm just gonna lay into the lay into it. So this one here, tip up to there. Move it. Pretty good. Okay. And flip it there. All right. See, when these are folded over, look at how pretty that's going to look. Pretty, pretty, pretty. With the little prairie points. All right. Let's get her, get her done. I will work on this side. Just make a few of these for now. Whew, my back hurts. I might have to get up and walk around for a minute. I'm kind of slouching over here. I sure hope I have enough squares, guys. <laughs> I'm going to face this towards me because then I could see if it's straight. Can't you cut a lot of your dies with um, your Sizzix or your fabric with Sizzix? I'm pretty sure you can. I have a Go Baby, and they have separate dies that I um, 
put my fabric on it and I it goes through the machine. Like I have one that does two and a half inch strips. I got one that does uh, four inch squares, half square triangles, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh. And it's called a what? A go baby. Is that like AccuQuilt? Uh, yeah, uh, AccuQuilt, yeah. And they have dyes for it. Oh, wow. And is that expensive? Um, I got, I used a coupon for mine. Oh. And then I catch the dyes on sale. On sale. Right. So am I boring you guys now? <laughs> no. No. I'm asking one of your um, uh, followers because they're asking a list of stuff for what they should buy. Oh, okay. And I'm trying to find out uh, what kind of crafts they want to get into because the list will depend on what you want to do. Right. Like if you want to do paper crafting, you're going to need scissors or scoreboard, a paper trimmer, you're going to need glue, tape. <laughs> You're going to need paper. Like, the list is different on every different subject, different craft. Right. <sighs> Ooh, I'm sitting back. I really, I'm actually, guys, if you don't mind, I'm going to get up for a few minutes, walk around, make a fresh coffee, and then I'm going to come back. Because right now my back okay. is, ouch, my back is hurting from leaning over. I don't know why my back always hurts, but I'm going to just leave this and I'm going to get my iron off of my ironing board. She's going to move for the cause. <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm going to leave it on its mat. So we made one. See these, I guess these make up pretty quick, eh, KK, once you cut the squares. Yeah, they make up pretty quick. And, yeah. you know, and, it, and if it is a little bit time consuming, they can always do that first before putting a quilt together. So that way, when you get to the end, it's done. Yeah, it's done. So, yeah. Hi, Yinar. I'm going to get up and walk for a minute. And I just think this is going <laughs> to, isn't this going to be gorgeous, KK? Look. Yes, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it done. You got <laughs> me like itching the quilt again. I got my quilts out. Oh, good. Sure good. I absolutely love the Prairie Points. They're time consuming, but they finish off an edge so beautifully. When this is all done, you guys are going to love it. You're going to love it. I might even just top stitch it because if I, if I do top stitch this and when I sew that binding, if I was able to catch this part here, it will keep these prairie points flat too. So um, I'm using 100% cotton fabric. Uh, Tina? No. What's her name? Oh, I'm so bad for names. I'm using 100% cotton anyway. Uh, all of it. Except for the backing. Um, the back of my quilt, I use this white stuff. This is the velour that I used on my bead boards. This one here. And this is honestly, this is honestly, I swear to you, honestly, the most simplest quilt to make minus these. And these are not hard to make. You're watching me. Toby. Toby. I'm so sorry, Toby. Yeah, I'm using at any, you can use anything that phrase for a red quilt. Wait till you see this washed. Then you're going to be like... Okay, I'm making one of those because <laughs> they right. are easy, right? Right now, well, it doesn't look also, like what, you KK? Also, you can also use flannel. It don't give you that frail, frail look, but it will give you that curl look. Like, it'll still bunch up like it's frailed. Oh, yeah. Easy, yeah, these. Flannel and fleece. Yes. Fleece shrinks up the same way cotton. It, they all shrink the same. They shrink together. <laughs> so these are going to be really small and puckery. You're going to see them when they're washed. It's so you're going to love it. So <clears throat> I'm going to go get everybody coffee, according to Debbie. 
Okay. Thank you. I need a refresher. <laughs> okay. Hi, Johanna. Hi, Johanna. Hi, Johanna. <laughs> I just had to do it. I'm sorry. Ruby, Nikan says she wants milk in hers. <laughs> Mm. Penny, do you know which one he's talking about? Or she? Oh, my bad. It's a, it's a Christmas pop-up box with the layering Christmas tree stamping. Huh. I don't know. I would look, but I don't want to lose where I'm at. Let me see. Oh, that's so pretty. Mm. Tissue paper. Right. Oh, and you know, you hold on. I'm not here. Just an idea. Jeff's home, so he took over making the coffee. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. There we go. Now, I need to pull this back down a bit. And I need to pick that up because it's going to shut off. Shuts off automatically. So. Well, this will give me an idea. Once I do one side and... Oh, shoot. This is why... I don't use this mat very often. Okay, I closed my sliding glass door so I could leave my phone on light. My husband decided to cut the grass again. <laughs> and as soon as he gets closer to the house, it's really loud. Ah. Uh. Do you have a riding lawnmower? Yep, that's what he's, yep. Have to. <laughs> well, it's uh, flea and tick season, so you want to keep those ticks gone from long grass, especially with dogs. Oh, I know. Uh, we put them on, um, what is it, Pervective? Pervecto and Interceptor Plus. Right. It's expensive, but you know what? It's worth every penny. Yeah. So I don't know why this one did not turn out. So I'm going to just trim that because I don't want it to throw off my edge. Could have just went crooked with the knife. Um, uh, yes, Johanna, you have to buy a scan and cut card. When I had bought my machine, I had already bought it with my machine, which is to Ruby. Just saying. Hi. I'm glad well, I'm I took the it. um the lantern that you had printed up and did. Uh huh. I took the the cutout part of the inside and I made it into a stencil. Oh yeah, I told you that would be nice. Okay. Right? 
Let's check this now. Where's that little piece? So we're going to measure from here to here is where, oops, prairie points, the fold goes down. I can't see this either. I'm right on that line or not. And then we'll do that. And we will line that up. Put the next one down. Please tell me this is going to be perfect. A clip there. From there to here. From here. Two here. Okay, guys, wish me luck. <laughs> I'm already nervous. Mm. Scared I I'm might have to make adjustments. Oh my God, please tell me you're going to fit one more in there. Might be, might be pretty scary stuff. I'm making your favorite for lunch. Oh, uh, what? 15 bean soup. Ew. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I am told you going to like it. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> this one's moved over about a half inch. So I don't think that's going to be very noticeable. Do you? What's moved over a half inch? <clears throat> this last one is over a little bit more than the rest of them. See the triangle here is a bit smaller. So that would mean. You, how big did you say it was? You said it was 31. Yeah. 36. Well, so it's in the corner, so if you did all the corners like that, then it would not be noticeable because then it's going to look like you did it that way. Well, I am going to move these over a wee bit. Wee, wee bit. So let go of that. Just so it's not that noticeable. <laughs> I can yeah. tell from your right that those first three or first two or at least the second one in is more <coughs> than the rest yeah so yeah i would just measure well i could measure but i'm i've got an overlap so i don't know how big my overlap is well that's what i mean like from corner to corner when they're pinned together <laughs> measure that yeah. Yeah, I can't be bothered to measure. So I'm just going to move them over a wee bit. So this one doesn't have such a small little thing, little triangle. So there we go. I think we're fixed. Looks a little better, right? Well, that has to be completely flush with the corner. I had a feeling you were going down right. You know, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Is it you know, you know, is it you know? Yes. Is it better to buy the scan and cut machines or using the plate embossing crank machine? She's like, I'm sorry if my words aren't coming together well. I'm on day 34 of a migraine. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. Oh, God, poor you. And I just put, I said, you buy what's best for your needs. I say, but some of us have all the above you listed. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to take my little thingamajigger here and I'm going to cut a little piece off of it so I can make the rest of them 
all the same. Okay. And then I'm going to begin. Should I begin sewing that? Because. Oh, I got to wait. Like, till I do one corner. Okay. So this goes. Oh, yeah, they're good boy, squeaky. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why is your back wet? Can you close it? Yeah, I just re sprayed downstairs again. I found a dead one and a live one in my bed. <clears throat> so, how did I measure these before? How did I do this one? I don't remember now. From there, that one. Oh. Can you close my door, Jeff, please? Um, I forget how I did this. And there. Now what you could do is use a piece of paper and fold the piece of paper like that and then mark your line where the other one should overlap on top of it so it's equal. You know what I'm saying? So put a piece of paper underneath that and then mark it. What do you mean? Okay, so fold a piece of paper with as the same size as your prairie point. Put the piece of paper on top of the prairie point so that way the one prairie point is overlapping on top of the paper and then take your pencil and mark it so that when you go lay it down put the paper on top of it and it's right where you got the mark at all right oh, i'm gonna do it this way that's the right place i think no this one is okay So, mark a line there and there. So, I'm going to move this one here. Those per points are perfect. So, I'm going to move this one here and line this one up underneath till it is perfectly lined up with that and the money. Why does that look? Does that look no? Make, make look, make the piece of paper into the prairie point like you've got prairie points right there. Make it the same size. Fold it like you would a prairie point the paper. So the triangle is the same size. Then you place it on top of your one prairie point underneath the other one where it's overlapping. And then take a pencil and mark the paper. So that way when you put the paper on top of the prairie point, the other one will overlap the paper so that way you know where it lays at. I don't you get what you're saying, but I'm going to do it what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Um, let Hang me on. Let me, let me do this. Okay. Let me cut this out. Because I'm not getting what you're, what you're meaning. Okay. Now, what exactly do you mean? I don't okay, get now, this. Okay, now place the play. Okay, the very last prairie point that you made. This one. Place it on. Yeah, place it on top of that, and have the other one overlapping on top of it. Now take a pencil and mark your point from the prairie point that's on top of the paper. Okay, I need the right one. This is the right one. That was a, That's what I was trying to say earlier, and you said I'm not measuring. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't measuring. Yes, it is. This yes, it is. Just, just mark it. Just remember, just mark it right there. Exactly. I was trying to say it from the point to point. Oh. 
point to point. This was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of hard to explain it <laughs> without a visual. Now you just line up where your mark is, See? and then bam. All right. Look at that, and then it takes. Then you can lay your um. You should start from wonder the clip underneath the paper, and then hold it down. Should what? Begin from the right and make sure all those are, are correct first, and then do them all from right to left. Oh, I can't. I don't want to. I'm probably going to have to, but I don't want to. Why does this not seem like it is right? This one's just giving me habit. There we go. There you go. Now, now get the wonder clip and then just clip the um, fabric down, not the paper. I need to trim this paper off a bit. It is not nice. So trim what? There, that's perfect. You slide the paper out and pin it. Okay. Oh. Works. <clears throat> It's working. You can oh, tell how even they are. You can, see, huh? you can see how even they are now. And then that way you won't forget what you were doing with the little piece of fabric you were using. Now you have your little template, and I would keep that template for future templates. <laughs> right. Okay. So, with all due respect, I don't think I need all these pieces of paper. It's just not necessary. So, I have two pieces. So I just need to sit this on top. And overlap it. Till the cows come home. Look good? Yep, looks good. Okay. And we only got one prairie point left. <laughs> Gotta make more. So then I'll know how much I need for the other side because it should be the same, right? Yep. We're hoping. But do you see how fast you're going now with your lining them up and all that? Now you have that template? Yes. Yes. Thank you, ladies. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't want any dog ears hanging off that. <coughs> there. Okay, let's create it looks, some It looks more. really good. You could even actually leave them on your quilt like this too, you know. You don't yeah, you have could. to flip them over. Yep. Some of the other dog ears, dog ears, the uh, prairie points, the other ones that you make when you fold them like this. And like that, these mm -hmm. ones here, you don't overlap these ones. You just put them one right after another. Or I don't like these that way, though. I kind of like them with the little pleat in the middle, don't you? Yeah, I do, too. It's a little more work, but... Because then you can hand sew little pom-poms at the end of them. <laughs> I'm just giving ideas. <laughs> you can, like, hand sew different things at the end, at the points. Mm -hmm. Debbie said leave the poor dog's ears alone <laughs> I'm actually going to move this out of my way because I can't work in this teeny tiny little space oh I know well I bought me one of those um, you know those plastic tables that you would take to like a yard sale yep a uh, Lowe's in Maryland had them on clearance for $50 a couple years ago, so I bought one. So that one, when I'm not using it, it gets folded up and put away. But when I'm quilting, oh, it comes out. I know. I use those type, too, but my machine bounces on that. I've got one of those. Oh, my God, the thing weighs a ton. Oh, my God. Yeah, they are pretty heavy tables. 
They are. I don't, I don't count on it. I have a sewing table that has a cabinet. Oh. But like my cutting and what you're doing right now, yeah, I would. Yeah, my cutting is on one of those. My cutter is on one of those tables. Yep. The table up against the wall. Spark alarm going off again. That is very freaking hot. Okay, you're just irritating me. Oh my god, my iron melted this. <laughs> yeah, that's for cutting, not for heat. Oh well. It's the first time it's ever done that in all these years. I have Debbie says Barbara. Well, she's saying that her mom um, made sew embroidered knit and crochet. I do sewing. I taught myself how to sew at the age of eighteen. Yep, I think I've been sewing for many moons. Many, many moons. moons. <laughs> yeah. Many moons. I'm my old. Mom made me hem my own pants by the time I was about nine. Hand sew them, Penny, or sew them with the sew machine. Sew them with the machine and the blind stitch by hand. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, something I wish they didn't take away in schools was home ec, because in home ec, you learned how to cook. So cook. How to sew. Yeah. You used to have to do half a year workshop and half a year home ec. The boys should have to take it, too. They yeah, did. When I went to school, boys did take it, but I'm just That's saying, I wish they would have left that stuff, because these kids nowadays, they don't know how to do nothing. Uh -oh. nope. They just know how to argue with you. It doesn't make any sense to me how somebody doesn't know how to cook. If you have to eat to survive, wouldn't you know how to prepare food? Well, the whole point of going to school is to, so that way you can be a productive adult. And who right, exactly. is very important of being a productive adult. Exactly. You need to be able to take care of yourself and, you know, like get out of bed and get dressed in the morning. And eat. And clean yourself. I have a jacket that my mother-in-law made for my husband when he was a child. Yep, she gave it to me. It's pretty. Well, not pretty. It's handsome for a boy. <laughs> what? A jacket. Man, I made my kids all kinds of outfits. Summer outfits. Oh my god, I even used to make them shorts, matching shirts. I did all that. That's. I was big into sewing. In my younger years. Uh, Barbara Higgins how to, how to buy crap, buy frozen food from the freaking, you know, pre-made crap that I'm supposed to be eating and get teeth out. That's about it. That's how they eat. Yep. And they wonder why everybody's, you know, dropping dead by age 40. Well, I'm trying to teach my boys that it's cheaper to make your own food than go out and spend it because it doesn't it have is? all the extra ad additives in it, like the preservatives. And it yep. Is. And it's healthier and better for you. It's not processed. Yep. But Barbara Higgins says it's y'all's anniversary next month. It's going to be a year since she started watching you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Barbara. And I still have my Barbara Higgins cup. I use it mostly on the weekend. Always on the weekend. It's just I can't, I can't drink two cups of coffee, and I don't want to dirty it for one. <laughs> I'm lazy like that. I'm and still nobody. waiting for my Barber Higgins butterflies. So am I. Just saying. I don't have Barbara enough Higgins. butterflies after all the beautiful <laughs> butterflies I got from uh, April from her Hobby Lobby. I took wood shop class. I was the only girl. Yeah, I did too, and I made a clock in wood shop. I mean, <laughs> Debbie, I did both. <laughs> I can't it made me it. sick that there was no girls in there. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, but when I was in school, in high school, in home ec, you, you had girls and guys. It okay. was the whole class. Junior high. Bye, Johanna. I didn't have a junior high. My school went to, <laughs> at that time, my school went from kindergarten to grade eight. And then 
it went from uh, high school grade nine to grade 13. And then they took away the grade 13 and condensed some courses that you needed your these honor courses that you need to graduate. They combined them into all your grade nine, 10, 11, and 12. So you could graduate before you had to graduate at, at uh, you couldn't graduate from level 12. You had to graduate from level 13. They don't have that anymore. Grade 13. They haven't had it for so many years. I think the way most adults are, they should have been kept in school to grade 25. Yeah, right. I don't know how some people. <laughs> I was bullied in, in high school. I was bullied so bad that I was at the point of killing myself. Oh, Barbara Higgins goes, I'm working on them, KK. I'm just really slow with the pain. It'll take me some time. I promise. I was like, it's okay. I'm messing with you. Working with what? I miss it. The butterflies. I said, making those, butterflies. those handmade butterflies. <laughs> oh, she's not making any for me. I don't need any. They're beautiful, but I've got. Yeah, they are beautiful. But Deborah, Deborah, Debbie Codson said every woman has at least one challenge in their life. They either marry it or give birth to it. And I think I've accomplished both of those challenges because I gave birth to three of them. <laughs> I have no challenges in my life until I actually open the door and step outside. Everything outside the door. <laughs> well. I'm okay. I have my boys are actually really good, even though once in a while they give me a headache, but they're very good. They know how to cook. That's one thing I made sure they did. Oh God. Yes, both of my kids, my son, they are really good cooks. That's one thing my mother taught me, but again, I had no choice but to cook. And both my parents were in the hospital and I was still in high school and my mom was in her car accident. And then my dad hurt his back. And then shortly after that, he got kidney stones. He had to have kidney stones removed because they were lodged. And then shortly after that, he had to have his gallbladder removed. My dad and mom were in bad shape. And I, we had farm animals and everything to take care of. And then I had my younger brother and my younger sister living at home still. The rest of them were all grown up, married. And I was the oldest one left at home. So I had to cook for my younger brother and my sister. And we had to take care of all those animals. My mom was in the hospital for a very long time. She had to undergo so many surgeries after her car accident. And then it was hard for me to attend school. I didn't care anyways because I was being bullied in high school by this one girl. I hated her so much. She was always wanting to beat me up, and I'm like, thank God I catch a school bus home. <laughs> so I live out in the country. Good luck catching me after school. Mm-hmm. My fault. Everybody's got a nemesis in school. Yep. Yep, she was a nightmare, that girl. Did you tell then your boys that when they get married, they better treat their women right, or else you're going to deal with you? I tell my boys that. I say, I don't care if you're 35, 45 years old. You better treat your wife right or else I'm going to come get you. Yep. I only have one boy. Well, I have three. I have two. <laughs> 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 and they're both furry. <laughs> yeah, you're, <laughs> you're Tony's furry. <laughs> it is. I know, that's what you're referring to. I know that. <laughs> I knew that the minute you said furry. <laughs> they have both the amount of, same amount of fur, the dog and the, the man. Yes. God, I hate men that are hairy like that. Not hated. I just don't like it. I live with a Yeti. <laughs> oh, look. I'm sleeping with an ape. <laughs> <That's much. laughs> right? Yep. My Yeti has mange. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's got patches everywhere. That's about oh, no. yeah, yeah. what I just got. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going to complain because on cold nights, you know, you want to get warm, you just cuddle right next to him because it's like a heater lay next to him. I am not sleeping next to Mange. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say a blade again. Not real Mange, but it's like I just fancy. pictured a guy with all these like like open sore bald spots and the rest is covered in hair. <laughs> I don't have Ooh, Mange. Penny, you're nasty. Listen to Tony. I don't have Mange. <laughs> you have a complex now. Karen just gave everybody a complex. <laughs> oh, the visual I cannot get out of my head. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I just love you. Thank you so much. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the laughter. Woo. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> okay, well, I bought. Oh, my God. One second, guys. I have to talk to my daughter a second. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't stop. My eyes are crying now. <laughs> Hi, Christy loves Abby. Uh, he has mange too. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a mangy hubby? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Christy's hubby. Uh, you have mange? Hey, I have hobbit feet. I have hair on both the tops and the bottoms of my feet. I swear to God. Um, my hubby says I have squat, Sasquatch feet. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> and I have monkey toes, too. Okay, look. My toes, my, like my big toe, the second toe, decided <laughs> that it was going to get a cramp, and it happened to my right and left, and they both went <laughs> south and east, and the other one went <laughs> south and west. <laughs> oh, my God. It kept doing it all night, Penny. So I took a, a potassium pill thinking I needed potassium. Oh, no. I was laughing because you could feel the foot start, you could feel the toe start to point down and turn it. And I just start laughing. And my husband is laughing. He was like, Why are you laughing if it's turning? Because I was like, It's funny because I can feel it moving. <laughs> and it looks so bizarre. <laughs> it looks like it's just like, Oh. Uh. Yeah. I'll explain it. But it, I was in tears by the end of the night, but laughing because <laughs> of my toes. My father always called me monkey toes because I would always do things with my toes. I went to turn on, you know, push the little button on the, on the, on the vacuum cleaner. I would use my big <laughs> push it down like a finger. Everything. I would pick things up with my toes. I used to pinch my dad with, with my toes. Did you see what Kelly Armstrong said about hers? <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> We call them our man bees. <laughs> oh, man. Well, my hubby kept saying that my monkey toe wanted a banana, so it was going <laughs> to run away from me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the banana? He was pointing to the kitchen. <laughs> and then he was like, Foxy, watch out. Mom's monkey toe's on the loose. <laughs> He's like, I don't want you to get hurt. I'm like, will you shut up? <laughs> what if it what if it all of a sudden like like flung itself up to the curtain rod to start swinging around on it and you were just dangling from your monkey belt? <laughs> the curtain rod would have got broke. <laughs> it's gonna be hanging a whole lot of ass upside down. <laughs>
<laughs> also, we're talking to KK. She's a tall crab, and we hear. <laughs> and she's just flying through the house. <laughs> her toes flinging her around. <laughs> Munch, monkey howler screeches. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty messed up. My hubby is telling my poor, my poor little Pomeranian to be careful. He don't want her to get hurt because of my toe. I was like, that's so wrong. <laughs> it's not gonna go attack her or anything. Mama's monkey toe is gonna peel you like a man. <laughs> 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 I might pay for it later. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that does hurt though. I mean I've had that but so many My muscles are hurting now if I stop it. And then you have to quick stand up and walk on it to get it to stop and straighten out, but it's still funny as heck and <laughs> hurt hurts so bad so you're laughing and wanting to cry at the same time. It looks ridiculous. I've had my pink doing this stick straight out the other you know the opposite way. <laughs> so I look kind of like a Neanderthal. Oh God, yes. Did you see what Barbara Higgins said? And then Christy oh. Barbara says at least you're not like April KK. I was like uh, lol. <laughs> I was like, can you imagine if Crystal was here? Oh she'd be peeing herself by now. Oh you're talking about her moose knuckle, not camel. <laughs> Girls cannot have moose knuckles. That's guys type pants. <laughs> Oh no, she's got the wrong kind of junk for a new <laughs> uh, God. Smashed rat. Pressed ham and pressed rat. Crystal Wood, she would be falling onto the floor right now. I've heard Crystal laugh so hard that no sound actually comes out anymore. <laughs> Haven't you? Yeah. She's literally silent, like but too. her head's moving and her mouth's wide open laughing, but there's no sound coming out. And it's like your head, you feel all the pressure. And, yeah, I get like that. Yeah. Just, and it's like headache time. Like, it's so funny. You just can't go, like, breathe in and out to get the ha 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 out. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nothing else comes out anymore. You're just out of sound. You used it all up for the day. <laughs> And then after laughing that hard, then you actually do lose your voice. Okay, I just saw a Seth or a Maya hand saying, hold on. We got Hi. Uh, okay, my mom's laugh, when she laughs, when she actually laughs, I cannot do it, but I wish I could repeat it. When she laughs, her freaking tongue rolls. <laughs> it's like a... <laughs> What if she chokes on it? <laughs> oh my god, it could roll in her throat. <laughs> she doesn't laugh like it. She's like, ah! and it's like, <laughs> but she's laughing. It is so funny. I don't know how I can even repeat it because it's so funny. That's gonna sound like a turkey gobble. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, look at the puppy! But it was puppy cam. Did you see the puppy? No, was it Luna? Uh, yep, it was Luna, the white one. Hi. Yep. Bye. Oh God. Okay, we're we'll use that. Woo. No, Elvis out. Oh. Yeah, he's open. I have to go here soon, guys. I have to tend to do some things with my daughter. 
Okay, was you gonna show what um what was made for you? Yep. Before I go, okay. I'm gonna okay. clean this up and show it. I will. It is beautiful. Oh, that's too close. I want to cover up the one part of the sign. No, I'm mean, my my viewers will know. Oh, sorry. Bless you. Thank you. I might as well finish this one I started, right? Right. <clears throat> My fingertips are actually kind of burnt. Ew. Sorry, I, I was have... just I was telling your subscribers the attack of the monkey tail. <laughs> My subscribers? They're not subscribers. Well, your friends well, are friends. My bad, your friends. Our friends. I love Our friends. Voice. I don't ever consider these people subscribers. Sorry, wrong terminology. Right. Thank friends. you for correcting that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Monkey toe has spoken. <laughs> right? I'm a, little com I'm a little combobulated, like... Because I just explained to them about my toe. It mishapped the other day. <laughs> okay. And so, will this take two more kicking? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Should fit two more perfectly. But it doesn't look like it's going to fit two more. Hmm. One side can't be longer than the other. Like, no way. Look at it. What happened? Yeah, you know, when people use the terminology of subbies, I just want to punch them in the face. When they say that word, oh, look at I've got 5,000 subbies. That is so degrading. Well, guys, I got to go. Unfortunately, um, I'll sit here later on this evening if I get time. But I have to go somewhere with my daughter. And um, maybe I'll make a few more of these so I'm not wasting your guys' time. A few more prairie points. But right now, I have to go. <laughs> How am I going to figure this out? <laughs> I do not know. Because that one was way off. Way, way off. I don't know. We'll figure it out. If I wasn't such a perfectionist, I would just sew it in, but I can't. No, I, no, I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I just can't so, do it. I hate ripping out seams more than I hate remeasuring it. <laughs> right. Well, with quilting, you always check twice before you stitch. Yes, and this did not work out, so I'm kind of glad I didn't sit here and waste the day, sew them on, and start sewing them. Because I was going to start sewing them, remember, KK? <laughs> yeah. Well, what you need to do, you need to measure how big the two pieces are when they're overlapped with each other. And then calculate how long the side is. And then you'll figure out how many pieces you Like, need. I could just put them here without, you know, overlapping them. But then that doesn't look as nice. It just looks like a big zigzag. Right? They look so much nicer overlapped. Right? I'd love it over. Yeah, so how big is that piece? And then you just calculate how many you would need for the long side. So if there's six inches and it's 41, you right. just figure out how many would you need. Right. Okay. So I'm going to just set these aside for now. This here, this here. I might have to make adjustments. 
and <clears throat> I'm going to pull out what I got from the ladies. <clears throat> and <clears throat> oh my god, the kids are fighting. Kids are fighting already. <clears throat> okay. So I really don't want to wrinkle up my my uh, binding. So I'm just going to leave that nicely flat in there. Leave those scrap tapes there because I'll probably use them. And move that. All right. You guys ready for a good laugh? It's not really a laugh. It's actually it's funny, but it's so freaking adorable. This is adorable. April made this and she burned all of the wood and colored it all in. So the middle girl is me. This one here from the left is Martha. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole. This is uh, me. Mary. So Martha, Nicole, and Mary, and she detailed these. Like, look at what she did. And then over here is, no, this isn't me. This is Penny. This is Penny. This is Mary. That's April. April and that's KK. <laughs> There's Crystal hiding behind the tree. Oh, she runs greenhouses. Yes. And there is a coffee cup with an arm that says Jeff. And the iron. <laughs> and me with the iron. And on the bottom it says, calm your tits, because I say that. And, she, and oh, hey. And kiss my twat. <laughs> Don't think I say that very much. But <laughs> only the phone solicitors. <laughs> and she and she shellacked it, or what did she say? This is a plastic resin. resin. Yeah. She resined it. It is so thick. You can really see the glare on it. It's super, super shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that cup made me almost pee myself laughing. <laughs> and look, I'm throwing the iron. <laughs> and look who's going to get bonked in the head with it, too. Yeah, Penny. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I can't believe it. She burned all of this. It's so pretty. It's so cute. It's just something to be treasured. And I will treasure this forever. <laughs> it's funny. Yuner, Yuner is Amy. She said that needs to be a t shirt. Right? What does? Right? That whole, that... The, the picture of the gang it needs to be a t shirt. Yeah, it does. She did such a wonderful job at all the detailing. She said this was a stamp, and she stamped it in, and she burned it all and colored it all in. Yeah. And she's got me in my pink. Look at my pink nighty with the big daisy on it. <laughs> my pink night there shirt. <laughs> oh, this, this, I don't know. Just looking at this just brings a smile to my face. It really does. So like I said, if I'm ever down, all I have to do is look at this. This will just brighten anybody's day. Yep. This is it's so funny. It is. It's look funny. Look at her. She's doing a knee slapper. <laughs> and so is Mary. She's <laughs> slapping. Angela will be coming back soon, you know. She um she's just dealing with her daughter's graduation right now. So she's kind of tied up with that and she's got some uh, ideas and she ordered some craft supplies so she's coming back soon yep she's a busy busy girl uh -huh. well my loves i have to go <clears throat> i'm sorry i can't finish this quilt today i wanted to but i didn't realize how time consuming making these are and what was a bit time consuming but you know once i get figure out how I could get them on here to fit nicely across and evenly. I'll do that so I don't have to like do this during the live show and waste your guys time because I do want to put a little bit of quilting design on what I've done here, but I'm going to wait till it's all done because then I'll have something to grab onto. I do have quilting gloves 
these things are hot, but you really have to use these. I can't use my bare hands and move it free motion quilts. I have to use these quilting gloves. So, and they do grab the fabric quite nicely. All right, so I'm gonna go. Thank you all, I'll see y'all tomorrow, it's Friday, hey. And yeah, oh hey, and calm your tits. <laughs> And kiss my twat. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> oh, that is so that disgusting. Oh. I vetoed that last suggestion. <laughs> oh my God. Of all the sayings, they picked the two swear word ones. <laughs> it wasn't us. That was all April. Oh, it was all April, eh? Well, those are the most memorable ones. I'm like, we remember all the other ones, but they were like the most, like, d drop dead just laughing. Like, my <laughs> right. That was my copy. Yep. All right. Thank you all. See you all tomorrow. Have a great day. See you. Bye. Bye. Son of a pygmy. Yeah. Dirty, rotten pygmy. That's what she should have put in there. <laughs>